Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and as the intro would suggest, today I'm going to be taking a look at a kit for the Nightingale. This kit was designed by a very fine fellow in the Netherlands whose name I cannot pronounce. Uh, that is his online handle nickname sort of thing. I'll let him pronounce it. Hello, you beautiful people. I'm Dennis, also known as Rajar. Anyway, uh, I will have links to all of his various social medias, uh, his YouTube channel, his Etsy, his all that, down in the description if you want to get a hold of one of these kits. Um, I believe he just sells the hardware. You have to do your own printing. I could be wrong about that. He might sell printing as well, but I know he sells the hardware kits. Uh, I did the printing on these. He sent me two of the kits, which includes all of the screws, nuts, bolts, springs, and the aluminum bars for the stock. Mine have my logo laser etched in them because he is awesome. And it is a neat little kit. It's a fold over style stock. So it remains fairly svelte. It is thoroughly solid. It does lock in place forward and backward, which is pretty neat. Doesn't get in the way of your iron sights when it folds over the top. Pretty schnazzy, or at least it doesn't if you have his barrel kit. Uh, this barrel that I have on here is also his design. It gives you an extended, this version gives you an extended battery tray, uh, lower rail, upper rail, pretty cool. Opens up in the front using, you know, a standard thumb screw. Pretty nifty. There are different barrel options if you want a medium or long barrel. I went with the really short snub barrel. There is also a version that doesn't have the extended battery tray or lower section if you don't want that. Options abound. It simply attaches using the original uh, rail screws that they have on the top. Uh, other than that, it's not held in. I've got those screws out, so it just slides off the front quite, quite handy, but it locks in place quite nicely with this all holding it uh, in place and the extended battery section is really really nice because it makes it much easier to get uh, slightly larger batteries in there without all the issue of cable management so that is pretty nifty and we're gonna put the stock together because it's a neat little build and I'm looking forward to it so you do not have to open the blaster to install it it installs using these three screw mounts and they have um, metal screws or metal threaded areas on the inside. So we're just going to take those three off, um, well these three off on this side, these two off on that side, and then it all kind of bolts to that and to itself and it's really quite nifty. So here we go. Now this kit does not reuse any of the existing hardware. All of the, the original screws are replaced by ones from the kit. There are a bunch of different sizes. There are some hardware that you have to install. One thing I really appreciate about this kit is rather than ever having you thread directly into PLA, there are always nuts or metal thread that you're going into that is reinforced from the far side. So everything is extremely solid. The side ones are the second shortest, it would appear, on that side. On this side, we have one nut that goes on the back one. And I believe we're just going to use the shortest screw. I'm not actually sure what purpose this serves other than making it all look standardized. So that goes in there. And then this comes from the other side. And we use that second shortest one on the last two. I have a feeling we might actually use, maybe it's supposed to use a longer one there. Yeah, yeah, okay. So there we have the bars installed, and you can, the, the stock itself is technically removable if you wanted to run it without and just have the, you know, without that stock on there, it comes off for, if you don't want to have the stock on for whatever reason. But let's go ahead and build the stock now. We have this central section here and it's got the two buttons that are going to go into it and depending on how you print it you may have to do some some cleanup i had to do some cleanup to get the the buttons to actually fit but spring goes in button goes in and you want to make sure it's moving freely and doesn't stick you then have these plates which go over said button and hold them in place but they should be able to freely pop up through there. And that's what's going to 
cause the lock. Uh, once again, we're adding our thread. So we're going to need to push those into those two sockets and then push them down in there. Okay. Buttons working properly. Okay. Next, we will install the bars. And again, we've got a pair of thread to put in there. And these are going to use the the longer of the bevel-headed, wedge-headed ones. The bevel-headed ones do use a smaller Allen wrench, but it's the same one for the screws that are actually in the Nightingale, so you shouldn't you should already have the tool. And there's that. Get that lined up. Lovely, lovely. Finally, we can assemble the stock, as it were, which has some spots where we need to uh, press in nuts. Okay, got those on. Now we just need to add the bridge, which also has more washers that need to get inset, or bolts rather, nuts, nuts. Just use a pair of pliers, press them down in there. And there we have the full stock. And I've said it a couple of times and I'll say it again. I love that he uses bolts and, and metal thread and all of that because it just is so much more solid. All right, now we should be able to squeeze these in, put that in there, put in the last bolt, and it is done. And you can see it's locked in that position and locks in the forward position, relatively. It doesn't, for mine, and maybe this is because of my print quality or what have you, it'll lock as in it doesn't, it's not flopping loose, it'll stay when you, when you move it around, but I can simply flick my wrist and pop it, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm told it's actually supposed to lock in the forward position, but it doesn't seem to want to, and I'm I'm okay with it. Need to tighten up the rail screws. And there we have it. It it solidly locks this way, but for some reason it doesn't want to fully lock that way on either of mine. I don't know. It's the same on both. They'll stay open, but... Boom! All the way. There we go. <laughs> All right. Now that I've got them both, I can go to the range and plink. So, let's plink! I put that one on upside down. There! Now they're both proper and matching. Oh, and that one's now properly locking. All right, let's see if we can figure out why this one isn't. All right, now I got them. Now they're properly fully locked. I uh, had to reprint the buttons. The first ones were a little too large, so I just shrunk them to my slice slicer by uh, 2%, and now, now they are locking properly. Very nice, very nice. All right, now, now I shall go to the range. Right. I'm here on the range. I have one of them that's folded, one of them that's extended, and I'm a plank. Oh, come on, I got him. Am I really out? No, I didn't think so. Come on, there we go. <laughs> that 
That is a lot of fun. Uh, you may have noticed I did in fact print and add the Fidlock um, on that side. I, I only have the one pair, two pairs, for my uh, Pew Pew, so this was taken off my Pew Pew. I'm gonna order more from Out of Darts. And uh, yeah, they fit. I'll show you, in fact, you know what? To the shop! Right, my final thoughts. I dig it. Uh, as I said, there's no pistol so svelte that someone won't immediately turn it into a carbine. And this is a really nice way to go about it. Having that fold over the top stock keeps it very compact, relatively speaking. And yet it's, it's a really solid design. The way everything prints, uh, you don't have to worry about sheer forces. It is all very, very solid. And those aluminum bars, the fact that everything is held in with bolts and nuts, rather than just being screwed into PLA or, or, or even ABS, um, is really, really solid, and I I like it. Um, it. Folds up fairly compact if you compare it to an, an less modified. This one has the the top rail, but not the extended battery tray barrel. Same same designer. Um, it's not really that much wider. It's a little bit wider, obviously, because of the side plates. Obviously, it's a little bit longer, but it's still relatively compact. And given that this one now has the holster stuff on it. I can easily use my Pew Pew holsters and they will they will sit on there quite nicely. And uh, these magazines will also fit in the magazines that are on there. So I don't have to build a whole new leg rig for this blaster, even though it will no longer fit in the holsters I originally used for this one, which is just a universal holster. Um, really, really cool. I like, I like the design. Um, so the, the folding stock and the, the barrel are all one designer. I believe this part is a different designer, but I don't remember who. It might be the same person. If you're watching, who, who gave me these when I was in the Netherlands? Somebody handed me five of these for me and five for Flux. Uh, they're really cool. They are printed in TPU. They add, I think, six rounds, maybe seven rounds to the capacity. They just slide it. You take the bottom cap off, slide this on. You don't need a new spring or anything. They seem to be working fairly well. I had one jam, but I think that was not from the extension. That was just because the dart got just a little bit forward. We just had to tap it to settle it. Um, but that's that's very cool. I like how they made the top of the magazine match that curve right there. It's just classy design choices. They got my logo in there because people are awesome. Anyway, um, whoever designed that, if you watch this, or if it is in fact the same person, let me know uh, and let, give me a link and I'll add it. The, the trigger guard, if anyone's wondering how I got that spelt trigger guard, that was designed by a member of the auxiliary and they just gave me the file. I don't know if it's a, a, available anywhere online. It might be on Thingiverse. I have no idea, but it's really, really nice because that makes it um, more possible to put into a holster. These things came with a really bulky trigger guard, but then they came with kind of a belt clip holster, but it wasn't great. With that trimmed down version, this one's printed in orange instead of black. Uh, now you can put it into a standard universal holster. I think it'll actually also better fit into a double AK pouch. Options abound, but I really like these kits. I like, I like a bulkier design in general. So I, I like the, the weight of it, I like the look of it, I like the functionality of it. Very, very cool. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but you can, in fact, take the stock off very easily just by pushing these buttons in a little bit further, and the whole thing comes off. And now you're back to not having a stock, you just have a little bit extra material from all of that, but simply push the buttons in and lock it on and uh, you're back in business. So just a really cool, very economic, very simple design and I like it. So there are my final thoughts. Links will be in the description. Get yourself some. <laughs>